What's going on, church fam? Welcome back to Everyday Church Life. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So recently, the Heavenly Father placed the words, new wine in my spirit. And that caused me to do research on how new wine is created. Well, first, it has to be harvested. Then it has to go through a process of being crushed and pressed. But the word that stood out to me was fermentation. So that process begins to take place when it begins to go through a chemical change due to yeast and bacteria. And it starts a chemical reaction so that the sugar turns into alcohol, therefore beginning the process of wine. So it has to sit in some mess before it can become. And then after all that processing, it has to go through another process called clarification. And that means to filter out the impurities and then it's placed into bottles, barrels to go through an aging process. See, in order for the Heavenly Father to give us new wine, we got to go through the crushing. We got to go through the pressing. We got to go through the fermentation because that's the process of when the conversions start to happen. See, God is converting you so that you can receive what he wants you to have. But he's not going to leave you without some sort of clarity because after the fermentation, that's when the clarification happens. When you're fully converted, that's when God going to bring your life more clarity so that you may understand why you had to go through this process. And God wants to strip out those impurities so that you can walk boldly in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 5 verse 37. And no man put new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottles shall perish. See. God told me to let you know because he placed this in my spirit to share. Stop trying to put new wine into old bottles because it's just going to spill out. See, God is trying to pour into you. But first, you must let the old you go. God is trying to fill your cup and you can't pass it to another. It's a list of stuff that we must go through in order to fulfill the will of God. Even Lord Jesus said, Father, if it be possible, can you take this cup from me? Is there another way? But then he said, nevertheless, let your will be done. If you want the will of God to be done in your life, stop trying to fit the old in with the new. Because in order for the heavenly father to pour his abundance in you, to use you in a mighty way so that you may fulfill his will, so that you may bring glory to his name. Let go of all that old stuff that's keeping you broken. That's keeping you in shackles. That's keeping you attached to bondage. That's keeping you in a place of lack. God wants you to be released from your old life. So that you may become a new creature in Christ. He wants to give you new wine. That's a representation of a new life. Lord Jesus said. This wine is his blood and this bread is his flesh. He said, when you drink this and when you eat from this, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, that word that I just read said, if you put new wine into old bottles, the bottles shall perish. If God pour into you but yet you're still the current person that you are. The old you. The person that God is saying put away. If God pour into that person, you will perish. Because you won't be able to receive everything that he's giving you. But when you're depleted, when you're, you're in this mess, you'll get to a place of being tired. Because in this mess, it's starting to strip away the stuff that you no longer want to be attached to. 
when you're going through the fermentation process, you're going through a chemical reaction. God is changing the chemistry of who you once was so you could become something new. When that process begins, God can pour into you because all the stuff that you was holding on to at one point in time is now being stripped away. That's why it feels like your life is a mess right now because God is calling upon you. He's, he's, he's tugging at your heart. Lord Jesus is knocking at the door. And here's another thing that the heavenly father placed in my spirit. He said, when he hit your line, be available. See, a lot of times people feel like they are missing their calling because they're not available. Now think about this for a second. We make time. We become available for stuff we consider to be important. Like that television show. Like the favorite people that we like to be around. Or if we're looking for a new job, we're waiting for that phone call. And we make time for this. We make sure we don't miss it because there, there's a need for it. At least that's how we feel. That's the same energy we got to have for the Heavenly Father because there's a need for him to be in our life. He's the only one that can fill that void. He's the only one that can make use of the mess in order to turn it into a masterpiece. See, when God fills your cup, we got to be prepared to drink what's in it. It's not going to be easy. It may even have a bitter taste. But this is attached to your calling. This is attached to the plan that God has for your life. This is attached to your destiny. And he said, be available. Be available when he calls you. It's time to let go of the old stuff. It's time to walk this narrow way that leads to life. It's time to be made new. See, this new wine that God has given you, it's a fresh anointing. There's blessings that come with it. Restoration. Clarification. But God must filter out your life in order for you to have room to receive this new wine. So be available. God wants to use you in a mighty way. But if you're never available for him, the same way you make time for the stuff that you want to make time for? How can God ever use you? The enemy will just continue to keep you feeling lost simply because you never picked up the phone when God called you. You wasn't available when he hit your line. When he called you by name. And he said, I'm ready to use you. See, the process of making wine, it has to go through an aging process. But in a spiritual sense, that's us undergoing spiritual maturity. The only way you can do that is if you sit for a while and talk to the Heavenly Father. So we got to have patience. But how much patience do you want to have? The reason why I say that is because Sometimes God might be already ready for you. See, a lot of times we pray for a better life. Like, dear Heavenly Father, when is my life going to get better? I've been having patience for a long time. When is my life going to just turn around for the better? What if I told you the situation that you're currently in right now is God making your life better? It might not look like how you want it to look, but if you didn't go through the fermentation process, if you didn't go through these hardships, when God gets you to a better position in life for real, you wouldn't know how to appreciate it. See, when I was homeless, I thought 
that was my life just becoming terrible. And of course, nobody wants to be homeless. It did feel terrible. I'm not going to be naive to the point and not admit to that. But I didn't realize that the Heavenly Father used that situation to pull me out of another environment that wasn't good for me in order to isolate me. That's the wine being poured in the bottle in order to isolate me so I can undergo that spiritual maturity. See, when I became homeless, that's when my life became better. When I was going through my hardships, that's when my life became better. When I got on the narrow way that leads to life, although my environment at that time was me being homeless, living in my truck, losing my truck, sleeping outside, sleeping on a bench, sleeping in every type of climate that there can be. When it was hot, when it was cold, when it was warm, bugs flying everywhere. One day my mom woke up with a giant bug on her shirt. When I was going through that and when my family was going through that, that was the beginning of a better life. See, looking back on it now, I realize you don't get a better life just because you stay in a nice house or you drive a nice car or you wear nice clothes or you married to someone. That's not necessarily a better life because it's people that got all that but still live terrible lives. A better life, a better life is when you come to know the Lord. That's Lord Jesus. When he knock at the door of your heart and you let him in. God wants to make your life new. And the situation you're in now, it feels like crushing. It feels like pressing. It feels like you're sitting in mess. Just like the process of when wine is being created. It sits in mess for a certain amount of time until it's converted so that it becomes what it was meant to be so that the yeast and the bacteria and the sugar, all that stuff plays a part causing a chemical reaction. God is creating a chemical reaction from within your soul. He's changing you from the inside out so you won't be recognizable when this process is complete. So basically what I'm just saying is you feel like your life is being flipped upside down. It feel like everything falling apart. That's because it is. The stuff that no longer serve a purpose in your life. God might be separating you from certain people. He's using this situation to help you break certain habits. He's placing you on the narrow way that leads to life. He's making the crooked path straight everything you're going through now is just building you up for what's later that breakthrough moment so you got to trust god during this process especially if you want your life to at least feel better because believe it or not what you're going through now that's the process of your better life it might not feel like it, like I said earlier. But that's the beginning process of God giving you a brand new life. We have to be broken down all the way in order for God to pick the pieces back up and rebuild us so that we may be stronger believers. So that we may have more faith. So that we may develop perseverance. To get through any hard time that we may face in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to give you new wine. He wants you to experience a revival in your soul. But you got to believe. You got to trust the process. I know you probably hear that word a lot, but for lack of better words. That's what you got to do. So be available.
when God called you. That's some real stuff, y'all. Be available. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.